Hey guys, Kajri here, and today we are back for another Diecast review. This time we're reviewing another multi-pack, but this time we've got a four-pack. Um, here we have the Race to Win four-pack. A pretty cool pack, I wouldn't say it's one of the best ones. It's kind of how I feel with the Aaron Clocker one. Like It's alright, but it's, it's not really great to be honest. Um, the only car I need from this set is TG Castle Nut, which also happens to be another revolting car. So, for some reason, Revolting um, has been the sponsor this year, which has been in every single pack. Um, not every single pack, but it's just been in multi-packs. Also, like Trunk Fresh, I don't have the stock car or the next gen. It's like, I only need four more stock cars, Trunk Fresh being one of them. So, that's another sponsor, along with Revolting, that has just been put in packs, which is a shame. Um, but I suppose if you live in America, that's more widely available for you. It's just whether you want to spend the money on cars that you may or may already have. I think these sets are great for first-time collectors, but let's be real, most of the time, you know, it's not a first-time collector buying this. It's so uh, they're kind of... Uh, they just try and get rid of cars and just try and get more money. But I managed to talk the seller down um, to £3 under what you'd find it within a store and about £6 from what he was selling or something. So I actually got this cheaper than if I found it in a shop, which obviously I'm not going to because it's only available at Target. So I guess that's not too bad, I guess. And now I have finally completed Revolting. It's a shame that um, this didn't come... Um, or I didn't order this before I ordered Aaron Clocker because I could have done the reviews in order then. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure if I've, I've actually ever reviewed Davy Apex, so they could be in the other order. We could do G TG Cast on it, and then um, I'm thinking about opening the suggestions again, and he could pop up on one. I don't know, because obviously it's getting around that time where cars are kind of slowing down a bit, or at least, you know, I've uh, got certain cars for Christmas and stuff like that. So it could be slowing down a little bit because there's not so, as many new releases coming out. Although we have been shown new ones, they'll probably most likely be for next year. Um, so yeah, anyway, in this pack we have Danny Suarez. This seems to be the purple variant. Uh, TG Castle Nut, awesome, awesome car. He's going to be the main review. I'll try and get through these guys as quick as possible. And then we have Murray Clutchburn. This one actually looks a lot better than the version I have. So that's pretty cool. And then we have the boring regular version of Tim Treadless. So along with Danny Swervers, I have three Tim Treadlesses. Um, with Danny Swervers, I have one blue and two purple. And with uh, Tim, I have two of this matte version and then the sh one shiny version, which I managed to find in a single uh, in a place I hardly ever find cars. Also, if this looks wonky. I know it probably does. Um, I think it's just the box. It came a tad bit damaged, but that probably wasn't from the seller who gave it to me. It was probably the seller who uh, sent it to him from America, because as you can see, he got this from the US originally, and uh, some stuff I've got from the US hasn't been packaged the best, or maybe it has, but it just comes such a long way. Um, yeah, like I said, for Race to Win 4 pack, you've got this nice gold effect target did that sort of in 2017 with Rusty's Racing Center McQueen. And you have the Cars Free logo there. Uh, this is before they changed it. You can see on the top as well. Here we just have Blindsided by a new generation of Piston Cup racers. If I zoom that in, Lightning McQueen finds himself suddenly pushed out of the sport he loves. To get back on top, he will need to help. He will need the help of a young race technician inspired by the late fabulous Hudson Hornet and guidance from a few old friends along the way. Very, very cool. Now we come out a little bit. You can see here it's just a little bit of damage, but obviously I don't care. I'll probably open it from this way. We have Race to Win 4-pack, and it says the race for the Piston Cup continues. Will a new racer break Lightning McQueen's winning streak? Well, more than one racer did, <laughs> that mainly being Jackson Storm. So here we have TG Carson up, looking absolutely awesome. He's such a cool car. Murray Clutchburn, Danny Suarez, and Tim Treadless. So it says recreate scenes from Cars 3 as well. Pretty cool. Like it how they've done two next gens and two stock cars. That's a pretty good mix. I just wish they had they included better ones because really Mattel, you're doing like at least you know one of the main ones and another pretty main one to be fair. So I don't know why they did that. Uh you know, Mattel have to make their money. Also, here's the bottom of the pack. This all the legal stuff. Yeah, no one really cares about that. So without further ado, let's get this pack opened up. I won't show it on camera because it'll be way too long, but I'll get all these die cast out individually and we'll go through them very, very quickly because obviously I have reviewed all three of these uh, previously. If you do want to see them, then um, they're just on my channel. I say I'll put links, but I probably won't. So just look on the Cards Free playlist and you'll find them there. All right, let's get these guys out of the pack. All right then, so I've just slipped them out of the first part of the packaging and I've noticed that they all have the rubber bands on the bottom. As you can see there, in certain lights, you can see the rubber bands. Now I saw um, Disney Docket had this issue 
uh, in one of his reviews where he got um, cars in a multi-pack. can't actually remember what the cars were now. Um, but, but yeah, to avoid that, I'm going to quickly go and get myself some scissors. So that should allow me to cut them so I lose and uh, loosen any tension. I should just be able to pull them out um, so I won't ruin the axles. So if you guys ever come with this problem, I wouldn't advise stretching the elastic bands because that could pull the axles. All I'd do is just from the bottom here, as you can see, just cut them, um, just pull them up a little bit and not too much. Cut them and that'll loosen the tension and you'll be able to get them out easy as possible without ruining the cars. So uh, another thing Mattel do, which is not great, but yeah. Alrighty then, so they are all out of the packaging now. Now sadly my little uh, trick didn't work as well as I thought there. I had to uh, still really just pull them over the axle, but I just did it really carefully. So they're all fine, which is pretty cool. Now I must say they've, Mattel have definitely improved on some of these cars because I got Murray Clutchburn as a part of the uh, May 1st cars, so the very first cars that came out. And um, this set coming out a little bit after, this is obviously a later one. And the decals are much better on this, I must say. I'm not sure if my one has a black line or if they all do, I can't really remember. But the wheels, they don't stick out nowhere near as much as they did. If we have a look there, you can see, they. I think the axle is still a little bit too big, but in comparison to my other one, the axle, like the wheels stick out loads. And the same with TG Carson Art, which we'll get onto later. His uh, wheels at the front are a lot, like, you know, further in, which is a lot better. Whereas some cars have got like Bobby Swift, they're just hanging practically off the axle. Um, Tim Treadless looks um, not too bad. And Danny Swervers looks really, really cool as well. Here's another one that looks much better than some of the other ones I got. Here is the original one as well. Pretty cool, <laughs> the blue one. So uh, we'll, we'll have a little compare of him. But yeah, let's, um, let's set aside the cars for a second, including TG, and we'll start from left to right. Um, obviously not with TG Castle, and we'll start with Murray Clutchburn. So now he is the Cars Free Stock Car Racer for Sputterstop. He was then taken over by Sheldon Shifter. He raced from Cars 1 uh, all the way to Cars 3, and apparently he raced in the 80s as well, which doesn't really make much sense as to how he'd still be racing in 2017 and how he just got this major facelift. I don't even know how that works, but here he is. We'll zoom in on it there. His decals look so much better. This is yet another color my camera doesn't really like, but I'm sure you guys all know what Murray Clutchburn looks like. Lovely turquoise wheels with his 92. Nice contrast on the top of the car as well. The decals are put on it like literally perfect on the back, as you can see there. You're catching a cold in my draft. You can see the camera on there too. After this video is done, I'll compare them to my other one to see see if I can see any differences. And then if we zoom on this side, it'll focus. Camera doesn't really seem to want to focus on this guy. Very, very nice. I'm pretty sure the decals are the same on each side. Uh, yes, I think, near enough. Yeah, I think they're the same. And then here's the base if you are interested. Yeah, overall, a great racer. Pretty happy to have another one, to be honest. Uh, definitely one that looks a lot better than the one I have already, which is awesome. Uh, up next, we have Tim Treadless here. Just a pretty boring car, one of the first May 1st ones. This is the obviously quite boring looking one with the matte paint. Pretty cool car, I took over for Nitrade there. One thing I did notice, I think they missed a, put, uh, they missed a little bit of matte paint or dropped something, spilled something on him. As you can see there, I've got a big blob of something, or the paint's very shiny there. But obviously I don't really care, because I already have this car. This is the one with no window bars as well. So obviously, well, the only one with the window bars is the shiny one. So his secondary sponsor's there. No, um, he doesn't have any rookie stripes. <laughs> you have a nice little chip there. But I don't care, I didn't, I didn't buy it for this car at all. Now I have three, <laughs> really don't need three. And then here we have Danny Suarez, also with no window bars. I know he looks blue on camera, but he is the purple variant. I'm sure if we put him next to the blue one, you can probably see a difference. Yeah, there we go. That kind of color corrects this one. See, it's very, very hard to tell which is which, but in real life, you can definitely tell. Purple, blue, uh, no differences between these guys at all. No window bars, as I said, very nice looking. Very cool indeed. Took over Bobby Swift for Octane Gain. I love all the gold patterns. You see it shining in the light. He was definitely a very cool one when he came out. Here's the base if you're interested. It'd be nice to see what a Thailand variant of him would look like. So now let's get on to the official review. The car we have come here for today, which is that of TG Castle Nut.
Alrighty then, so here is TG Castle Nut out of the packaging. We can get into the full in-depth review of him now. And um, finally, um, now he is the Cars Free Stock Car Racer of Revolting, as you guys can see on the hood there. He replaced Davy Apex. Um, either Davy was fired or he overtook him um, to be a stock car. So we don't see that. We could just obviously assume because that's what happened to him when Aaron Clocker came in. I'm really looking forward to the comparison of all three at the end as well. I think that'll look really, really cool. Um, now TG here is the Bobby Swift model. I think it's a pretty good model to choose for this car. Uh, he's got lots of cool designs. I love the red. Very, very cool. And this is one of the cars which is very similar to its Cars 1 counterpart, but you can definitely tell there's been upgrades, which is great. I like that sort of um, steady progression, which obviously the next chains don't follow at all. Uh, but yeah, the, this um, comparison to the Cars 1 and the Cars 3 stock car uh, looks really, really cool, I must say. Now, I'll put up any pictures on the screen of where TG appears. Uh, he'll probably be in one of the very first early races. Uh, hopefully there's a pretty good screenshot we can find of him. That would be really nice. Um, but otherwise, it will probably most likely just be a blur as he is a background character and has no speaking parts, unfortunately, for TG. Now, his name is pretty cool. We've, uh, it's funny, we've got one where it's a T.G and then Castle Nut. So it's kind of his last name. So I guess that's just what he goes by, TG, which is pretty cool. Now, Mattel this year did get him mixed up with Davy Apex here. They called him TG Castle Nut in a single. So if you try and type it up on eBay, this guy will probably most likely come up. And he's also been confused for Dave Alternators, but it is Davey Apex. So unless then Davey Apex is just a nickname for Dave Alternators, I'm not sure. But, you know, Mattel have always got to screw up somehow. So now without further ado, let's get on to the physical review of TG Castle Nut. As we come to the front here, we have his nice moustache grill. This is pretty similar to, I think, the Combustor one, maybe? Uh, I can't ever remember, but this grill has been used before. Uh, we have his really cool lights there and the number 48. As I said in my Aaron Glocker review, they changed it from 84 to 48 to stop it colliding with the Apple car number. Obviously, it was smarter to change the number on this car than the Apple car because 1984 is the significant number for Apple itself, whereas Revolting is a made-up company, so they don't have anything to do with it. Here we also have the uh, side vent and a little bit of this carbon fibre decal, which carries on on the side. And the, you can see on the roof, on the hood here, sorry, we have revolting, rebuilt alternators, and you've got the contrast between this sort of new slanted logo with loads of different sort of gradients, and we have uh, different shadow ends and stuff like that, and the, everything's just slightly slanted. You can see his uh, engine pins there, or the hood pins, sorry, and you can see this um, contrast between this grey, which goes into this black on the hood, which looks really, really cool. It's a really cool design on the... Uh, hood, I can't wait to compare them to the original because they are pretty similar, which is very cool. Now here we have that vent again on the side, and we have light here, and then we have his grey tyres there, and his secondary sponsors which read Piston Cup, Vitalin, Revolting, RPM, Nitrate, Octane Gain and Clutch Aid. I now have every single one of them in a stock car version, and almost every single one in a next gen. Clutch Aid hasn't been released and I don't have Barry to pedal yet. So, nearly got all of them now, which is awesome. Now, as we come up, we've got rebuilt alternators there, which is really, really cool. They, it wasn't actually on the original one, and they don't really put the little, um, what they do or slogan there. I think Easy Idol might have had that, but I think that's maybe the only one. We have number 48, which looks awesome. Like I said in the, my Aaron Clocker video, 48 is the number of my favourite driver, Jimmy Johnson, so that's awesome to see a lot having a 48 car. And we have the little yellow line to indicate its pit crew where to lift them up. Uh, we have Revolt in there with a the fuel cap as well. Very cool. Sadly, we have a tiny little chip there. 40 out on the roof. Now, this is really cool. This sort of like, I don't know, funny effect. I don't really know how to explain it. it looks like loads of pluses. So maybe it's because um, an alternator is something which powers um, obviously a bit of the car. So maybe it's the plus and minus symbols to, you know, it's creating energy. Here with the white um, Window bars, there we go. I completely forgot what they were called. That also looks really cool. I just love all the colours on this, how they contrast each other. We have the red here with the pluses and minuses as well. Revolting rebuilt alternates with that same grey there, so it kind of goes from black to grey, which looks really, really cool. And uh, now this obviously is meant to be all black, but you know what Mattel are like, they've got to get something a bit messed up. But we have rebuilt alternates again, revolting the camera, and these really cool lights. I love these lights for the stock cars. And his fake exhaust, which look really cool as well. I love it how they do this. And we have a teeny tiny 48 there as well. I'll just focus in so you guys can see that a little bit better there. Now this side is exactly the same 
as the other side. Just sadly, we've got another chip in the exact same place, but that's bigger. But uh, once again, Mattel for you. Uh, this time, we only have the addition of the exhaust. That is the only difference there. Um, and we, I'll show you guys the base for anyone who is interested. Mattel made in China. We've got the one exhaust. Kind of relates to how NASCAR is because next year for the 2019 cars, they are lowering the horsepower of the cars to try and make the teams a bit more, you know, having a race team a bit more affordable. So I guess you could say maybe the Piston Cup did this as well. You never know. They've uh, de you know, downgraded the cars from once when they had two exhausts on both sides, more powerful engines, to now just having that one there, which is really, really cool. I like that. I think it looks cool. Like the King had two exhausts as well, which is pretty cool. I like it when they change things up for the different models. Very, very cool indeed. So now the next thing to do is to compare him to his older and newer counterparts. I must say this team looked really, really cool. It's had a really good progression as a team. I know a lot of people are not too fond on Aaron Clocker. I think he's really nice. He could be a bit brighter, I suppose, to match with these guys. But these two definitely look awesome in their comparisons for sure. So let's start with these two. I think that is the most logical to do thing to do. And we'll put Aaron back there. So as we come to the front of these cars, the one of the biggest things is they got rid of all the white. Um, the, literally, there's no white on this car anymore apart from his eyelids and the number, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't mind that. And we have a look on the hood here. Instead of obviously this being red, it's white here. So... Uh, but as you can see, the hoods are the same. We've got these black to the slightly lighter black. It didn't go as light as the new one. And then we bring these a bit closer. You can see we have the revolting rebuilt alternators. And then we have the much newer slanted one where it's got much better. It's got better text with two different colours. And like I said, shadowing. And we've got bolder text for the rebuilt alternators as well. So they just they just touched it up and made it you know less basic, which is awesome. Here they stuck with the grey wheels. It's not often you see a team sticking with the near enough exact same colour wheels anymore. We've got we've sort of lost this sort of stripe design to this carbon fibre sort of look where it comes from here, um, which doesn't make too much of a difference. And we have the 48, and then obviously this is 84. We've lost this extra black outline. It has a very, very thin black line around it actually, just not as thick as this. Obviously a lot of the contingency uh, secondary sponsors have been lost. Because, you know, they probably don't need it anymore. And Davey probably did quite well and they're probably quite a big company. I love the fact we've got Revolting in the same place as well. And if you look here, we have 8448, little Revolting logo. And then we've got the full logo there. Uh, they did change the window bars from red to white. On the back, we don't have the logo this time. So they traded out the logo position. This went to there, that went to there. Uh, so we just have Revolting and they have no slogan here, whereas they do there. Or not necessarily slogan, but just what they do. Awesome, and they switched around what way the black and the red is as well. And then the other side obviously is exactly the same. Very cool, this is a very good progression. You can still definitely tell what team it is, and you can also tell that they've upgraded things. So, well done Revolting. I guess you can see why they're one of the oldest sponsors, or I guess I, th I think anyway, because we're getting the Leroy Hemming release, and he, I believe, races for Revolting. So that means we'll have our first ever sponsor with four races. Um, now here is the comparison to Aaron, I was just saying on his um, eyes there. So now there's quite a big difference with these two cars, first off being the huge colour change. The one thing they do share, which Davey doesn't, is the same number, 48. Uh, they finally got rid of the grey wheels, Not, I think they should have kept them because they look awesome. Um, and they changed them here to Revolting. Uh, no, not to Revolting, sorry, here is the different Revolting logo, it's very basic here. Just the writing and then these very, very small slogan. Uh, on the top, they completely changed. They've got rid of this whole plus and minus pattern. Um, I think, oh no, they haven't. It's in the paintwork. There we are. I think, yes, here we go. This is something I didn't notice in my review. You can just about see many, many pluses and minuses in the body there. So well done, Revolting. You've kept, <laughs> you've kept one thing. Very cool. Like I said, I like this guy. I know not many people, he's not many people's favourites, but I think he's cool. Uh, so yeah, I think this is a pretty cool team. They just maybe could have made Aaron a little bit lighter in colour to match these guys just a bit more. But nonetheless, he looks very cool. Not many things are different though. Or <laughs> uh, oh, the similar, sorry. But yeah, that is it for my review on TG Castle Nut. I'm super happy to now finally have completed this team. You know, let's bring in the other guys in the background as well. They were in the pack too. 
But yeah, I um, hope you guys have enjoyed these last two videos of me doing multi-packs. Multi I've only really ever done this once in that Fireball Beach pack that came out um, in 2017. Um, other than that, I've never really bought one of the packs. But yeah, I hope you guys do uh, did enjoy this pack. It's very, very cool indeed. Now, if any of you follow me on Instagram or follow me or, or are in the Google Plus community, you'll see I've got quite a few new cars on Sunday and they will all be for reviews coming in, uh, obviously, after Christmas, after December. So stay tuned for all of that because we've got loads of reviews coming up. It may get um, this sort of run to Christmas now. I may have to try and maybe do suggestions or think of video ideas to do uh, as I don't have many cars left to review. But until then... Uh, you know, we just have to do a couple random reviews, I guess. Uh, but yeah, anyway, guys, thank you all for watching this review on TG Carson. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Super happy to now have finally completed another team. Awesome, awesome. Yep, thank you guys for watching. As always, I will see you in the next Diecast review.